Hey guys, has your Shield K9. So, a lot of you have been asking why the videos have slowed down, and uh, quite frankly, I, I've just been really busy with a lot of stuff that we've had going on here. But anyways, I want to kind of give you guys an update as to where we're at right now. What I'm doing now is I'm preparing my dog for trial, and I'm also working with um, Carson and Vasco and getting his dog prepared for trial. We have a trial May 13th. I'm going to be going in to get my BH title, and Carson and Vasco are going to be going for their IGP-1. So we're going to be in the same trial, so it should be fun, and uh, we're going to see what happens. So the last month, we've really been working hard to get all the holes in our game filled, get these dogs where they need to be, and the work is, is continuing. So right now I'm on the way um, to the tracking fields, uh, or my tracking fields, I should say. So me and Carson are going to be getting some tracking in, and I'll catch some of that on video for you guys. And, um, you know, Gage is, is looking really, really good. We had the opportunity the last um, last week to be training with uh, team, Temu, I cannot pronounce his last name, Parv, Parvainen, and he is a um, former Finnish, uh, well, he was a former uh, WSV world champion, so that makes him automatically uh, one of the best trainers in the world. There are very few people that achieve that, um, and, uh, you know, we've been working with him, and, and, you know, when you train with world-level trainers, with guys that, that have been in the top in the world, it's a different kind of training. And it's a different kind of, it's, a, it's, it's really excellent. You have to get yourself around people like that if you want to be successful. And I don't care if your game isn't really sport. Get yourself, if it, sport, I've said it before and I'll say it again. The competition field is where all the best training happens. Even if it's not necessarily directly related to, you know, functional um, pet training or police dog training or protection dog training, Everything is applicable. You might not do it the same way because you don't want the same outcome, but you have to understand that the training methods that you're going to see um, in in that arena from the people that are the top in the world. I'm not talking about people that are just kind of there to participate. I'm talking about top level, world level trainers. Those guys are training on a level that that you will not see in very many places. You know, and I've been. It's on another level, and the reason why is competition. When there's competition, not just kind of imaginary competition, but an actual competition with judging that's as objective as judging can be, you know, where there's a lot on the line, that's where you see the most innovation in training. That's where you see training pushed to its extreme. And that's why the sport field is where you're going to see, uh, in my opinion, and you're going to learn the most in terms of training. And, and people get kind of confused because they say, okay, well, that, I don't need my dog to heal like that. I don't care how fast my dog lies down. You know, the police dog trainers will say, well, you know, I don't need my dog to track like that. It's not necessary for him to track like that. Uh, you know, I, I want more air scenting or whatever, whatever, uh, you know. But you don't understand. When you create such a high standard, the training outcomes aren't functional training outcomes, but the training methodology become, is super revolutionary. And the methodology you can apply to anything, right? I'm sorry, like, I'm going to say this. If you can train a dog to track on a world level in, in the game of IGP, you can train a dog to track in any kind of situation, right? Anything else becomes easy in comparison, right? IGP level one, two, uh, sorry, uh, IGP, especially when you're getting at a competitive level, is hard mode in dog training, whether it's obedience, protection, tracking every fundamental small thing is judged and if you can compete in that place in that space then anything else becomes very easy in comparison so that being said i'll see you guys at the tracking field all right guys so i'm going to start the track with a gauge here and then we're going to do carson's track afterwards um we're going to let carson's track age a little bit because he's going for his one and there's 20 minutes of aging anyway so it's good to start kind of getting that into the training a little bit so there's a couple of lessons that I've put into the track, outcomes that I'm looking to achieve. The goal is not to have a perfect track. The goal is for the dog to be challenged, to build confidence, and to build his skill and ability on the track. So, first things first, uh, Carson, why don't you go closer to my field? I'll come check in with you. Has engaged, checking in for uh, uh, sit, foos. And you can see the dog wants to break. I'm not going to put 
a lot of pressure here right now because I want him thinking more about the track. Good job. So, as in the gaze reporting for ITP1 tracking, dog will indicate articles. Go ahead. Moose. So now we go set the dog. Yeah. 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 And I like this, that he's like, oh, let me go, let me go. right turn coming up shortly so we'll see how he handles it he's already oh, oh very nice good job buddy he overshot but he stopped which is what i wanted would have liked a little bit of a backup there good job yeah yeah you can kind of see if you look at yeah, the Yeah, I can see, yeah. You can kind of see. Let them see it a little bit if they can. I don't know if you guys can see it. Yeah, you can. Good. Good job. There, he's a little bit... Here's the first article. That one was a screw up. He overshot the article a little bit. Start here. Oh, oh, good nice. boy. Good job. Good boy. And watch the restart. You don't want the dog fast. Oh, I see it Good. And that was where he ran out of odor and said, ah, I just better stop. And that's the pressure I've put on him to not blow out of odor. But there was still odor. He just has to learn a little bit to believe in himself there. And that's the big thing. When you put pressure, you have to understand, like, you know, sometimes there's side effects to pressure. And that's where we build the confidence back a little bit. We don't want him to be a gangster on the track. Hey, good job, buddy. There we go. And it's just the restarts I'm working after the article. He's a little bit unsure, because I don't want him to just jump ahead. I want him to just right into the ground after the article. And with a young dog, that involves putting some pressure. And now he's a little bit like, should I start? Should I go? Should I go? That's okay. As he learns the rules, it'll become easier. This is a shitty piece here. But the grass is like garbage. That's okay. I was saying to Carson, I don't mind if the grass is, is, is good and bad because if everything's on easy mode and we go to a trial and it's not easy mode, then you're going to have a problem. So there's a balance to be struck. Sometimes I'm pushing my footsteps into the ground. Sometimes I'm just walking normal. Here's a right turn. There's a dead end. Ah, very good. I feel a bit wide there, so I think I'll put a little more pressure, but right now I'm building some confidence. So if I put too much pressure on the dead ends, he'll start second guessing himself and freeze up, which is not what we want. Where we say you don't get to go out of order. There's a right turn here, so see if he makes it. Very nice. He walked right out of the odor and then immediately turned into the track. Again, I think I'll work a little more some dead ends with him. 
just to get that tightened up just a bit more. You can kind of see people like a little more tightness and concentration in the dog. For me, I don't want that. I want, and some dogs just naturally are a little bit more like that. I want a little more of an active dog in the track, tail up. Onyx was a very dominant tracking dog, like super, his tail was touching his back when he tracked. I don't know what kind of foundation he had. I mean, it was pretty good when I got him. It's the one thing about his work that was really good. This is a nice long straight leg. Then we've got a left turn and a dead end. I think there's an article somewhere here. Good job, buddy. That's very good. The challenge with tracking is not to teach the dog to follow just odor, but to teach him to be so obedient to the odor that he doesn't leave it. Because in IGP, if your dog leaves the footsteps or raises his head, especially in the higher level, you get penalized. There's going to be a left turn soon. It might be here. Yes, it is. Of course, we've got a dead end coming up. up ahead. That's my dead end, I can see it. You're yeah. almost on my damn track. Good. <coughs> Good job. Now we see it. <laughs> Smart boy. That's the dead end there. That was actually not bad, that track. You said you went that way. Yeah, I did. Okay. My line is right there, probably two feet. What? <laughs> you said you went that way. That's why I went this way. Yeah, I went up, then right. No, I said, do you go that way? Oh my God. Yeah, I did go that way. <laughs> you don't listen. Fuck, I'm right on your line. Okay, well, we know. If your dog comes this way, you might yeah, have to yeah. help him. Yeah, it's yeah. okay, you'll help him come over. Yeah, yeah. I don't even think you're right on it anyway. All right, guys. It wasn't bad. It's going to be Carson's turn this time. Um, you know, still some few things, a little bit wide on the corners, and uh, we missed an article. I didn't even see the article, so I don't know where it is. I'm going to have to walk my track again and find it. Um, but hey, it's a training track. This is why we do them. That's not how you check in. How do you check in? In healing. You go and you heal your dog to me. Well, feed him, use food and just heal him. Go back away. Just like five steps. Just, just half-ass healing. It doesn't have to be good. Yeah. You should do this more with food. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Look at this lazy bastard. <laughs> oh, you need to start using like a ball in the well, heel. Yeah, I've done this. Yeah. Okay. Just, let me do what I normally do. Okay. All right. And watch for that part where I came. I'll walk along this line so I know where it is. Carson overfeeds his dogs. Good boy. Good. Good boy. Yeah, man. Good boy. Yeah, you see how he's blowing around the footsteps? Yeah, slow him down. Good. Good. This is good. This is like he's he's a little off, you know? And you see in the short grass, you think it's so easy, but the odor is actually more spread out. And that's why they do this snaky shit if you're not on them. Don't let him get fast. Don't let him pull you. The second he pulls you, it's a big pop. He's not to pull on the line. It's the opposite of police dog tracking. We don't want pulling. And if he lifts his head, you pull him all the way off the track. There. We want the nose in contact with the ground. Goodbye. Yeah, man. There you go. Good. Here's your right turn. I see it. So he's cutting the corner there. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's too late now. You want to catch him the next time he comes right off. Uh, hey, pop, 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 pop. Be a little more on that. I can see it. It's straight line. You see the straight line? This is hard. This is a hard area here for him. This is why you have to do this shit.
Okay. Can't always be nice grass. Yeah, I see that. Goodbye. He's too fast. There's your right turn. Just wait, just wait. Just let him do it. Yes, good. good. If you micromanage him too much, he'll never learn. Good boy, buddy. Give him a chance to do what he's going to do, and then we're going to see where the good things are and where the bad things are. If you micromanage him too much, he's not learning anything. So he is a bit fast, and, and now he's settling in a bit yeah, yeah. right there. That, see, you, you allowed him to take a big U-turn away so from... You said, like, allow, him to do allow him to do it, but within degrees, it's like he shouldn't be allowed to just go for expeditions off the track. This is not bad. This is not bad. This is what normal. Yes. So you need to put more pressure in the beginning. And stop putting so much food, because he doesn't finish it. Yeah. Put smaller pieces. Make him work harder for it, and he'll be a little more... He'll value it a bit more. Good. Good behind me. Good boy. Vasco's tracking like a police dog. It's not acceptable. <laughs> wait, wait. Is this the dead end here? No, it's up ahead. Okay. I see food. Yeah. This is it. So now give him a chance. Yeah. Give him a chance now. Good boy. And now give it. No, no, no. You're not giving him a chance. You're fucking cueing him by stepping up next. Okay, well, he knows. You better rule. There, pop. Yes. Yeah, super. If you always cue him by stepping up, of course he knows it's a dead end. Oh, daddy's doing the thing. Now give him a chance. See what he does on his own. Loose leash. Sometimes you don't manage him enough, and sometimes you overmanage him. Loose leash. What do you want to do? Pull him a little bit away. There. Super. Oh, pull, 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 pull. Right there when he lifted, throw the food down. No, you should have thrown the food down because you're just creating a lack of commitment, not more commitment. Now he's backtracking. Pull. Pull him away and throw food in that hole. Now pull him away. Yes. Now pull him sideways off the track. Pull him sideways. Now when he pulls you, let him go. Exactly. Throw more food there. Super. Yes. Now pull him away again. Good job. Throw more food now. Because whenever he goes, there's more food that comes. There we go. Yes. Good. And we never pop him off the track. It's always a pull. Pulling off the track means you you have to fight back to the track. If he doesn't fight, just throw food to make the fight more. Yeah. There you go. Pull. Just be more commitment on the track. Like there's like in the beginning, he's too loosey-goosey. And then at the end, it's like you're cueing him way too much by walking up on him. I would, I would walk up on him frequently just for no reason. So he's not cueing. Just like, like when you dig a hole in the ground with he's your... so used to me like pulling him back. And... No, but you can see, look, you pull him back and he just lifts his head. I, would, I wouldn't be okay with that. I lift up. Don't pull him back along the track. Pull him sideways off the track. Then throw the food on the track. So it's like such a key difference. It's like, look, you're either on or you're off. If you pull him back along the track, he's just going to lunge forward on the track, which is not what we want. We want him trying to stay in that line that is the track. So you pull him off the track and he fights to get back on the track. So at the end, it's the same thing. You never pull him back along the track. The only time I'll pull him back is if he's trying to cut a corner like what he did up there. Yeah, yeah, then I'll, I'll, I'll pull him on the opposite direction off the track. Yeah, yeah. Then I'll say, hey, get back into it. But when you pull him off, he doesn't fight hard enough to get back in. So what I'll do is on my track. All right, guys. So that's our, tra that's our tracking done. I'm glad I saw Carson's tracking because, you know, he definitely has a lot to work on. But this is his first competition dog in his first round in IGP so he doesn't know what to expect he's never tracked in a trial before you know I have the benefit of having done that so believe me I've learned from a lot of the mistakes that I made out there on the training on the trial tracks and of course the training tracks so you know when you don't know what to expect you make mistakes because you're not sure like what's actually involved in all of this so I'm glad I saw his track there was definitely some things to fix um, you know, but he's definitely going to do, he already did a lot better in his BH than I ever did with my first dog. And he's going to do a lot better, I think, in his training track, um, or sorry, in his, uh, IGP one than I ever did with my first dog. So, you know, um, I'm happy for him and I'm, uh, I look forward to watching his trial. I'm thinking about streaming it live. So both for me and Carson, I'm thinking about doing it live or maybe we'll film it and just uh, do a video after. Either way, guys, um, if you have any uh, ideas for videos, whether you want me to talk about something, you want to see 
you want to see something, you want a specific topic, put them in the comments below. Um, as always, if you want to know exactly how I train, feel free to join uh, my online training classes. Uh, we have online instructional video content, everything from functional obedience to protection training and more. We're going to be adding more videos as time goes by. Right now, I'm focused on trialing. Once that gets done, I'm going to finish up my competition course or at least some co components of the competition course. I'm going to be releasing that content soon. And, um, you know, it's it's an exciting time here at Shield K9. We're making some changes. We're, 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 we're making some developments. Um, you know, things things... We've, we have some good things that are that are in the future, and I'm really excited about it. So thanks for watching, and uh, I'll tune in with you guys soon. i got to give you guys an update on Yaxi. Um, I'm re I really like Yaxi, as you guys know. He's a, he's, a, he's a breath of fresh air around here. And, um, you know, so we'll make a video on Yaxi probably next. But anyways, like I said, if you guys have any ideas for things you want me to talk about or things that you want to see, uh, put them in the comments below.